together right here.
going on Crossing students. We're so glad that you're tuning in tonight. We've got some fun things in store. Uh, first off, you're going to see a game played by Pastor Carlos and myself called Peppers and Praise. We're going to eat a habanero pepper and see who can sing the best. Next, you're going to hear Pastor Cole and Pastor Tori answer some questions uh, about their lives and give an encouragement to you for this week. We hope that you enjoy and we'll see you guys soon.
This is Habanero Pepper Challenge, take one. What's going on, Crossing students? We are excited uh, to be joining with you today. We've got, a, we've got a little game. It's called Peppers and Praise. And so what we're gonna do is we are gonna eat this habanero pepper that stands before us, and then we are gonna wait two minutes. You're gonna see our reaction, uh, and then we're gonna sing our favorite worship song. Pastor Carlos here, super excited. What about you, Pastor Trent? <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous, a little bit nervous. <gasps> <laughs> are we going stem we're gonna, or no stem? Dude, we, hey, we got a shake and we gotta bake. Okay, here we go. All right, Shake bump, 15 chews, stare down, bump. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's not so bad. <sighs> I think the stem added too much heat. <laughs> I don't want to speak in tongues right now. I feel like a dragon. Is this what a dragon feels like? <laughs> it's like running a mile. You got breathing your nose out. So my ears are burning. Is that bad? My actual ears inside. Somebody might be talking about you, dude. Starting to cry. <laughs> oh! Real deal holy field. You ever see my Shrek impression? I am an ogre! Yeah! This really hurts bad. I don't ever want to do this again. You ever been in a sauna? That's what it feels like. You're just calm, silent. Makes me just not want to breathe. Uh, it's been two minutes. So now, each of you take a turn and sing your favorite praise song. Go ahead, Carlos. <sighs> Hurts so bad. Waymaker, miracle work. <sighs> Promise keeper. Light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. That is who you are. Da da da. Do 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 do. Mary, did you know it's your baby boy? One day you walk on oh, on the water, on the water. Mary, did you know it's your baby boy? Save our sons and daughters. Did you know? We love you guys so much. Please. Enjoy what's up next. We've got Pastor Cole, Pastor Tori in the interview. So guys, I want to be honest with you. This is about take 35 uh, for me. The pepper is messing with me. I feel heat in my ears. I might need to go to the doctor immediately. A couple reminders though. Uh, we can connect with you guys all week long on Instagram Live. So tune in on your parents' account, on your account. Come see us, come talk to us and interact. Also, during this entire service, we are in your chat. So talk to us, give us your feedback. Let us know what you're thinking. And also, if there's anything we can pray for you for, we want to do that. We love you guys. Enjoy. Let's go interview. First question, Tori, also known as Princess Luna. I am not. <laughs> what are your biggest fears? Biggest fears. They're completely irrational. Mannequins, morph suits, masks. What was the other one? Zombies. Z and then there's one more. Mannequins, more suits, masks, clowns. clowns. Basically, if I can't see your face, I think you're gonna murder me. What? That's pretty much that's the thought process. That's pretty sketchy. I mean, that's, eh. That's terrifying. I can see that, I mean, yeah. That's terrifying. It's irrational. It is irrational, it's completely irrational, but it's so scary. Like, we tried to get us to watch the Walking Dead at one point, and I literally had nightmares. Like, I can't. I can't either. I couldn't sleep. <laughs> Probably not a good idea, right? Yeah. I couldn't sleep. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, uh. Pastor Cole. Um, sharks. 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 That's not irrational. Wait, but that's like land walking sharks. No water. Water swimming what? sharks. <laughs> what? Okay. Water swimming <laughs> sharks. Okay. I don't like I mean, sharks. Wasps. Wasp hornets. I would I straight up fist fight a wasp too. any day of the How week. How can you fist fight a wasp? Because they just like fly around. You're just like. 
Like most men, and just then take you off hit their it to the ground and, and then you they step on it. And yeah, it's, it's over. That's game. But when a wasp flies over my head, I duck <laughs> and, I, and I, I try to get away. Scary. I, I run away. Run? I run away from wasps. I, I don't yes. know wasps. No, nah, dude. It's terrible. All right, next question, <laughs> Cole. What are your intentions with my daughter? Oh, I'm just please. kidding. That's just like a common I dad question. Have a <laughs> I have a kitten. A kitten. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, so how do you feel when you heard about this whole uh, coronavirus outbreak? Uh, mixed emotions. Um, to begin with, to be honest, there was a sense of excitement in me. So that sounds weird, right? It so, sounds yeah. terrible. Yeah, that sounds scary. terrible. That sounds terrible. So, let me, give me a moment to explain. Okay. So I believe that you know all things work together for the good of those that love God, right? right? And that anytime something like this happens, the church always comes out on top because God has his purpose and his way in this earth. I do believe that the enemy, we have a real enemy that is pursuing us, trying to kill us, steal from us, destroy us. And of course, this is released on the earth because we have a real en enemy after us, but I, I do believe it's an amazing setup by God to do something greater in the earth um, globally, not just in our nation, but everywhere. You know, Psalms 133 says that we have benefits from the Lord, that no perilous pestilence will befall us, you know, that we will always be protected. Um, God's benefits for us, His protection over us, is so vast in Scripture that we have nothing to really be scared of. Jesus himself said that we would take up the, the deadly poison, that we would be bitten by okay. snakes. We could hold them. Fire. I'm going to have to stop you okay, there go ahead, before go you go into sermon. All right. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, ask me. So, I uh, no, man. I thought somebody <laughs> was going to... question. I'm going to roll. <laughs> like, there's like a piano rolling and the people about to do an altar call. So, with the drastic measures to stop the coronavirus, what do you think about that? I think that it's wisdom. You know, I think that they, all nations are doing what they should do. Um, they're taking it seriously because it's something to be taken serious. But at the same time, um, I mean, we're, we're adhering to that. We're supposed to adhere to our governing officials, and that's what we're doing. And it will be stopped because of that. Okay. So, okay. hold on one second. So, what you're saying is God is not the author of sickness, but he'll use... Yes, 100%. And thank you, Pastor Tori, because I think that's very important. He's not the author. You know, James says that we can't be, we can't say that Jesus or God is tempting us, but it's our own lust that entices us and tempt us. Evil doesn't come from God. It comes from the enemy and from within us, right? That's our sin nature. Um, I, I do believe that, I believe this whole thing is a prophetic act, if you will. Um, the enemy has done something and tried to set up something for the kingdom that would try to debilitate the world, but God's going to use it and turn it around for the church's good and for his people's good because all things work together for those who love yeah. God. We're called according to his purpose, right? I yeah. mean, so wouldn't you agree? That's what that's the hope that we have the whole to. Mm -hmm. And you see, it's very synonymous to um, even the Holy Spirit. God's Spirit is poured out on the earth in the last mm -hmm. days, and all young men will prophesy, old men will see dreams and visions. Yes. So if that is the case, and we know that to be true, that's the truth of the, of the word, then the virus is spreading. And in the same way we see something that's horrible is happening, I believe God's going to dry it up. And after that to follow, that there will be a, a great awakening, not only in our nation, but across the entire world. And the Holy Spirit, like a virus, like into, in the same format, is, is going to start pouring out on people to where, let's just take common statistics that we know right now. If a person has, let's say, this virus, and we know it, and they're around someone, it's contagious to other people. But it's the same way in the kingdom of God. Um, you know, our enemy is a great counterfeit. He can't create anything. He just mm, takes things and good. concepts that God has and then he counterfeits them. Um, so you're saying um, trusting our leadership and authority uh, just as we do yeah, with our good. Father in Heaven. Mm -hmm. 100%. Yeah, it's yeah. really good. All right, so I'm going to throw you guys a wild card. Uh, all right, so story time. Tori, Pastor Tori, <laughs> name a scenario where you went to a store and you're like, I need this. And it's just like chaos. And you're like, no gummy bears for me. Mm. Albanese, those are my favorite ones. Mm. You got me? What's up? I have an exact scenario. So literally, Last Pastor week? Chen and I, like two weeks. When did this all happen? So Pastor Chen and I buy our toilet paper in packs of like a hundred from Sam's Club. So literally, we had like one pack of toilet paper for a year. And two weeks ago, it runs out. And we're like, we're out of TP. We need more toilet paper. And all this corona started happening, and there was no toilet paper. That's so we, it. like, scavenged 
all of the grocery stores. Hose. She's use not going to use a water hose. It's a well, horrible idea. Uh, well, I did see this meme that it was actually a uh, paper towel and they cut it in three. I mean, that's like, that's a little rough, but it is, you know, the quicker, thicker picker uppers bounty, you know, to get the job that's done. Horrifying. Get it done. <laughs> what about you, Pastor Cole? Oh, man. So, me and my wife went out last night. Or we have a, a four month old who is teething. And nice, we ran nice. out of baby Tylenol. Oh, right? so nice. That is a, a whole thing in itself. Wait, those were out? They were out, yeah. So we went to three, no, four separate stores. Finally, oh we gosh. landed at a CVS. And if you guys know anything about CVS, it's twice the price of Walmart. Wow. So we paid, Didn't know that. you know, like $10 for baby Tylenol. Oh. But, you took but we care, got some. You took care of your kid, though. Yeah, that's, that's what's right. up. That's that's totally fire, fire. fire. All right. All right, let me see. We have Pastor Tori question. How do you deal with fear and anxiety? Okay, so this is like a two-part answer. So first, I feel like there is reality to fear. Like, yeah. like we were talking about earlier, knowing that the coronavirus is here, we need to take our precautions like to remain safe. That's a healthy That's fear. That's good. Yeah. But w I think sometimes we get to this place where we let our minds like run. Oh, yeah. So when we heard about this happening, I was like, I'm going to get sick. Everyone in my family is going to die. Trent's like, honey, you're not even Whoa. sniffling. <laughs> Seriously. Like my mind went there. I just went, it went crazy in my head. Um, so I have to be intentional about like remaining in the moment where we are yeah. and saying, okay, let's not get out of control. Yeah. Like let's have my mind remain calm. Um, as the first thing, just like staying grounded in the moment. And then the second thing is kind of just trusting the Lord. And I know that that's easy to say and not as easy to do. <laughs> it is, it is. I agree. <laughs> that one lady like, just trust God. Just trust God. Just, and we're like, you got to give it to the, I told my wife, you got to give it to the Lord. You got to coronavirus. <laughs> I'm all elephant screams. <laughs> oh, coronavirus right. makes you do that. Yeah. No, it is scary. It is scary and hard to trust in God, but we have to go. That has to be our default nature. You know, is to that's a good question. Though. Trust the Lord. Tor, how do you trust in God if the situation doesn't seem as if you, it's hard to trust? How do you ground yourself? I all the time have to like capture my thoughts and just surrender them. And for me, it's like a literal prayer where I say, God, I'm afraid. This fear is real in my heart. I emotionally feel this fear, but I need to surrender it to you because I know that he's going to take care of me and I know that he's going to keep me safe because I'm his child um, and I have a relationship with him. So literally all the time, I'll have fearful thoughts and fearful, even like in my body, I'll get tense and fearful and I just have to like do everything in my power physically to just breathe out and relax and then go, okay, God, I trust you. I know you're going to take care of me. I give this to you, like, constantly. So it's yeah. like a constant surrender. That's so good. Like a renewing. Yeah. So it, you know, so you're saying, like, you trust in God because you know his word. And yeah. you're, you're calling him on his word. Like, you're calling him on his faithfulness yeah. to his word. Like, I don't have to fear right. because you've given me power, love, sound mind. Yes. I don't have yeah. to be freaked out in this situation because you're not, you don't give me anxiety or mm. chaos. You give me peace. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, right. Even you talking about that just brought a sense of peace just because uh, the coronavirus is like, we're not allowed to say it. It's like, Voldemort. It's like, you're not supposed to say that. Don't, don't say that name. You know, but you talking about, you know, trusting in the Lord and, you know, making that a daily and you have to keep doing that. Um, it does give me a sense of peace, you know, in all of this, mm -hmm. just even hearing you talk about it. All right, next question. All right. Pastor Tori, oh. if you could go out without your kids, would be fine, but you can't have this item. Like, what would it be? Like, food? Would it be rations, toiletries, uh, laundry, soap? You oh have to gosh. go out with one of, without one of them. I have to go without one of them. Yeah, like an essential. Oh my gosh! So I really want to say food, but I also really want to say like the normal hygiene essentials too. Eat. I yeah. do have to eat, but I, mean, I also don't want to be gross. Yeah. <laughs> I don't you know gotta eat. I gotta yeah. eat. I have to be alive. I'd, I'd say food. 
you oh, kind of okay. have to. I'd have to. <laughs> All right. Water. Wait. Pastor no. Cole. You have to have water. Water. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go water. Okay, Pastor Cole, you're from Plant City, so we're just going to narrow it down. Right, right. Uh, <laughs> toilet paper, beans, canned beans, water. Which one's going to go? Toilet paper. Toilet Whoa. paper. Hands down. That was really quick. Yeah. yeah. Why? Why? So what would you, how would you... Explain that a little some, bit. Toilet paper, well, cut it off. things in half. You could. I mean, you could use moss from a tree. <gasps> are you going to put a water hose? Do you, I mean, I have water, right? You go to the restroom, water shower hose. it, and then shower There you or? go. Yeah. I mean, so most of us have toilets next to our showers. Yeah. So you just, I know people who, like, you know, when they use the bathroom every time, they're so OCD, every time they have to get in the shower and take a shower just because they use, they, they took a poop. You're kidding me. No, for real. I mean, <laughs> so, hey, when you hey, got to go, you got to go. You, you get, know what I'm saying? You can create it, oh right? My but I have to have water. And I need beans. Why? I don't true. know. Beans will make the. Wait, wait, wait. What kind of what kind of beans do you get? Like um, like the sweet beans. You get pork and beans. You get the one with the dog that gives the recipe out. Bushes. Yeah. Oh man, some frijoles. No idea what they're talking. Goya. About. Goya. Okay. All right. We're from Plant City, man. No, you're right. Next question. <laughs> All right. So virtual schools bring uh, a lot of change drastically to our students. Um, how do you deal with change? Change. So we all go through change, right? I mean, it's kind of constant. I think, to me, the number the number one thing to deal with change is simply understanding that you're never in control. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think a lot of times we think we're in control, but many times in the Bible, I mean, if you look at Proverbs, if you look at uh, mainly Proverbs I'm thinking of, it says basically that a, a man will plan his way, but God has the ultimate say. And that, I'm paraphrasing. Um, we only see in part in things that we do in life, but God sees the whole picture. Yeah. And going back to what Romans 8, 28 says, that all things work together for the good of those who love God or are called according to His purpose. So if we know that God is in control, then no matter what change comes to our life, we can be content in that fact because Christ is the one that's really ultimately bringing out the change. Yeah. Yeah. And we have to come to that, that realization that He is in control. Um, no matter how bad it looks, no matter how good it looks, he is the orchestrator of all things. I yeah. mean, that's what scripture points that's, to. That's so good because right now the enemy wants us to make it seem like we're in control and we don't need God because once we take control, we stop trusting God yeah. and we isolate ourselves and the enemy wants us isolated, you know, because yes. then we think we can do everything on our own. Yes. And that's where we just and, trust God. And, you know, with that point, I would say to anyone who's watching, um, we're supposed to be doing social distancing. Please do that. But at the same time, don't lose your value in the fact that people, right? That's why we're here on this earth. Our purpose is our people, always. Yeah. Yeah. It's our family, our friends, yeah. um, us right here. Yeah. We have to come together, and I don't mean let's all join together and, and do what our governing officials told us not to do, but stay in contact with each other. I think that's why we're doing this video. Yeah. We want to stay in contact with our students because this is our life. This is, this is what makes us strong is sure. when we unify. Um, and fear is the ultimate liar. And I've always heard that fear is an acronym that is false evidence appearing real. Mm. Um, fear can make things bigger than they are. Now, I'm not saying that this virus isn't a big thing. It's a huge thing. But I am saying that fear in itself is a virus in itself that can amplify anything yeah. that is happening to a, a bigger level. Yeah. yeah. All right. So okay. last question. Let's go in sermon. Time? Sorry, guys. Okay. All right. So last question. Um, given everything that we talked about, um, if each of you could leave our students with one key point, what would it be? Pastor Tori, go. Key point. I think mine would be faith is bigger than fear. Um, the Lord does not give us fear. He gives us love and peace. And when we can, like we've been talking about, like surrender to him, acknowledge what's going on, but surrender to him and trust him. I think one of the things that Pastor Cole said over and over during this video is scripture. Yeah. And when yeah. we speak scripture over ourselves, we're building our faith and our fear reduces as our faith mm, increases. Um, so that's really the good. point. Mm, that's fire. Let's go. Faith is bigger than fear. Mm -hmm. Scripture. Scripture. Pastor Cole. Boom. Um, so I, I would just, I mean, to reiterate what we're saying, I think it's the theme, the spirit of it all, is that God is in control. He's in control of this whole thing from the start. I, mm -hmm. I really do believe that. And no matter what comes our way, we are bigger than that because of the Christ that's in us. We can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. Um, we have so many benefits. And if you don't know those benefits, go to the Psalms. Like, we all have plenty of time. Right. Go, go Holy Bible app, NLT, look up Psalms. There's so many promises in there to all of God's children. 
um, that he he reassures us. And we have to root ourselves, like Tori was saying, we have to root ourselves in his promises because there's always going to be things that rise up in our life. But faith is the ultimate thing that pleases God. And when he sees his people stepping out in faith, it pleases his heart. And it changes everything around us. It, one person in faith can walk into a room with people in fear and completely change their whole outlook on this situation. Yeah. Um, God is going to come through in this. I believe that. Um, I, I really do believe there's going to be a, an awakening through the Holy Spirit in every person's life around the world because of what the enemy tried to set up in fear. And God's saying, no, no, no. This fear is actually going to lead to a rise in faith in mm -hmm. my people and what I'm doing in the world. It's the greatest thing that I think we'll ever see. And I, I'm excited. That's why I'm excited. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to see what God is about to do, um, not only in the Crossing Church, not only in our region, not only in our state, in our country, but around the world. And I think that we're entering into a promised land era mm -hmm. to where everyone so is. Good. Let's go. So good. That's fire, dude. Let's go. Guys, we hope you enjoyed this segment with our youth pastors, Pastor Carlos, Pastor Tori, and Pastor Cole. Remember, faith is bigger than fear, scriptures, and God is in control. Yes. We love you guys. Love y'all. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in with us. I want to remind you, like, comment, and share this video with all of your friends. Also, DM us or email us if you have any prayer requests. We're taking this time right now to pray for you. We love you guys so much, and we'll see you soon. I don't know if I want to eat this time. Dude, we're going to eat all of it. I'm getting so nervous, I think i got to pee. Oh. Oh. He's singing uh, Butterfly Kisses. Butterfly kiss. <laughs> Should I go pee? You know what? I think I'm gonna go pee real quick. No, you're good, dude. Okay. Pee helps it not. No, I'm gonna go pee. Wait, don't swallow. I've been swallowing this whole time.